What's up, folks? Your buddy Fatal Ready Tank. We're doing a SmackDown review. Just a reminder, as a channel note, next week there will be no wrestling reviews. I got some family coming in from out of state. I haven't seen them in a couple of years, so I'm going to spend some time with them, but I will be back the following week. So with that said, let's get on with the review. We started off with a recap of the Reigns-Uso match at Clash of Champions. Back to the ring, we got Reigns and Heyman coming out. Reigns is angry because Jey Uso didn't acknowledge him as Tribal Chief. He calls out Jey. He comes out. Jay says he don't know Roman Reigns no more because of what he did at Clash of Champions. He says that Reigns beat his ass, but not his heart. Now, if Jimmy didn't step in, he would have beat Reigns. Roman said he tried to help Jay by putting him in the main event. All Jay had to do was acknowledge him as Tribal Chief, and the only thing he did was embarrass the family. Reigns offers Jay another title shot at Hell in the Cell, gives Jay a hug, says something, but it was kind of hard to hear because the microphone was so low. Reigns and Heyman walk off. Jey Uso chimes up on the microphone and says that he accepts. After Reigns leaves the ring area, AJ Styles comes out. He asks that the Lou hour is over and tells Jay that he matters to AJ. He doesn't want to see Jay get beat down once again and that he's willing to take Jay's spot at Hell in a Cell. This ticks off Jay and he attacks AJ Styles and we have a match. Jey Uso versus AJ Styles. This was a pretty good match. It was a good bit of action. Jay stopped a phenomenal forearm, hit AJ with the splash, and got the pin. Good match. Good opening match. I liked it. We get a recap of the Intercontinental Triple Threat match. Then backstage, we got Sami Zayn. He's pissed off of what he had to do to get back his title. Then starts to blame the audience and takes Jeff Hardy's Intercontinental belt and throws it in the trash. Then we got a recap of the Otis Miz bullshit, which leads us to our next match, John Morrison versus Otis. This is an M match. Morrison had the speed over Otis, but Otis quickly put him away, hitting him with a caterpillar and nailing him with the Vader bomb, getting the pin. Can we please get this over with? In a quick video package, we got Big E challenging Sheamus to a Falls Count Anywhere match next week. Then we got Shorty G versus Sheamus. Why? This is a glorified squash match. Shorty G put up a little bit of offense. Sheamus hit Shorty G with two brogue kicks, get the pin. Okay. Backstage, Kevin Owens looking over his show notes. When behind him on a TV screen, the Firefly Funhouse pops up. Which then brings us to the Kevin Owens show, and his guest is going to be Alexa Bliss. After a quick recap of the Lacey Evans-Alexa Bliss match last week, Kevin Owens starts questioning Alexa Bliss over her behavior. She's completely oblivious to everything. Owens asks if she's been brainwashed. She says, yes, my brain has been washed. It's been changed and cleansed by him. After talking about Aleister Black for a quick second, Alexa Bliss says all you have to do is let him in. Owen stands up, the lights go out, come back on red, the Fiend is giving Owens a mandible claw. The Fiend stands up, approaches Alexa Bliss, offers her a hand, she holds it, looking over at the camera and smiling. Next week we're going to have Kevin Owens versus The Fiend, and I'm pretty sure at the draft, because Owens had mentioned it at the beginning of his little show, that I'm pretty sure Kevin Owens is going to be going back over to SmackDown. In a six-man waste of time tag match, we have King Corbin, Cesaro, and Shinsuke Nakamura versus Matt Riddle, Lince Dorado, and Grand Metalik of the Lucha House Party with Kalisto at ringside. This is a match. It's the usual chaos as always. Kalisto accidentally kicks Grand Metalik in the head. Matt Riddle got the bro Derek on Cesaro, gets the pin. After the match, Lince Dorado takes it out on Kalisto. I think we're having a longer build with the breakup of the Lucha House Party than we've had with most of the other storylines to begin with. We have a recap of the Sasha Banks and Bailey saga. Back to the ring, we got Sasha Banks coming out for a promo. Sasha Banks calls Bailey a coward and challenges Bailey to a match next week for the SmackDown women's title. Banks takes off the neck brace and says, you don't have a chance, bitch. In a short video package, it's revealed that this mystery woman is Carmella. So I guess all the people that were saying that they recognized the, the tattoo on, on the side of the arm, I guess everybody was right. Then go on our main event, Sami Zayn versus Jeff Hardy for the Intercontinental title. Before the match, behind the referee's back, Sami Zayn takes off the top rope turnbuckle pad. This is an okay match. There's a bunch of good spots, including a top rope superplex by Jeff Hardy and a Sami Zayn exploder suplex into the turnbuckle. Sami Zayn pushes Jeff Hardy off of the top rope. He ends up hitting his head on the exposed turnbuckle. Sami Zayn gets the pin to retain. Like I said, it was an alright match. Sami Zayn scurries off celebrating with clutching his belt as we end tonight's SmackDown. It was also quickly mentioned that Sheamus accepted Big E's challenge, but the actual like video clip that really would have been better was shown on Twitter. So we're getting next week Big E versus Sheamus in a Falls Count Anywhere match, which Michael Cole called a street fight. I think everybody's notes are all screwed up. But anyways, tonight's SmackDown... <sighs> It was alright. 
it wasn't really much to really talk about. With the matches, we started off with a really good one. We ended with an okay one. Everything in between was kind of eh. I think we probably had like a 15-minute opening promo. Why? Uh, once again, it's, be you know, they used to, a couple months ago, SmackDown had, you know, like the quick fire Saturday night's main event. One guy says his bit, and the opponent says his bit. And they did that with, like, what, three matches that they had that night and went right to a match. Good. They should should go, they should go right back to that because it was cool. Got Everybody said their quick piece right into a match. We didn't have this 20-minute fucking monologue, which just drug on, and by the time the mat next match starts, or the first match starts, I've lost interest. They really, really, really need to get away from this really long opening monologue. Anyways, yeah, tonight, it was all right. I mean, I wouldn't... It was just marginally better than Raw. So that'll do it for this episode of SmackDown Review. Leave a comment down below what you thought of tonight's SmackDown, what you thought about this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Roadie. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.